2019. What a great year. I'm just kidding, it was shit. <laughs> what horrible year for me. I mean, mostly on YouTube is what I'm saying. But listen, I know, uh, you guys have heard me complain about it, so we're not gonna do that entirely. The first thing I wanna say is what the hell, YouTube, that, that rewind, man. K-pop! See, here's, here are my thoughts. I wasn't as much a fan of this top 10 list format for the YouTube Rewind. Listen, I know that they got hell for it every single year, but I actually really enjoyed when they made it like an original production instead of a top 10 list. PewDiePie said it great. It was like a Watch Mojo top 10 list. Exactly! Exactly. Exactly! Exactly! I wish that I had more to say about it, but I guess you guys don't really need that, do you? So here's what we're gonna do. We'll now look at the top 10 episodes on our channel. I say our channel because we run this together. I guess I'm like the queen hive bee overlord. And then after we're through with the top 10 episodes, I'm gonna deliver a word on how things will go in 2020. It should help to clarify some things, but by the way, we've done like a top 10 Scribblenauts creations for almost every year of this channel's existence. And we're actually switching it up right now because uh, 2019 was a time where we experimented with a lot of other series away from Scribblenauts. And I thought that there were a lot of good moments and episodes and uh, just times of fun, I guess, on our channel that were not in Scribblenauts Unlimited episodes. And so I thought we should make it top 10 10 episodes as a whole. You guys down with that? All right, cool. And now, our YouTube Rewind, but this time it'll be based on the top 10 episodes or videos rather than top 10 Scribblenauts creations, starting from the bottom and then ending with the Dr. Kendo favorite number one episode. Here we go! Number 10, the Mario and Sonic Olympic Games, Tokyo 2020, Dream Karate. I'm so happy and grateful that Sega themselves gave me the opportunity along with Evolve PR to actually allow us to play Mario and Sonic Olympics 2020 early. While I will admit it was certainly still validated and making me still feel relevant, it was more that I felt proud to be able to show you guys my audience, my community, a game that I knew that I would have fun with and be passionate about. Number 9, Dark Deception Pass Part 2 Paintings. Pass Part 2 is one of those games that started off great when I would post it in the old days of YouTube, and then I think most of my subscribed audience didn't care for it in the long run. I should make the distinction. If you're watching this now, you're one tier above and one step closer than my quote-unquote subscribed audience. You guys, the true members of Kandopolis, probably would be just fine with another Pass Part 2 video any day. But ultimately, I just thought that I had really improved a lot with mouse painting in this game, and the video had so many comedic parts to it. Fun fact though, I, I tried to get my wife to watch it and she basically thought I was just like acting really crazy. I think the video kind of turned her off to watching it any further, <laughs> unfortunately. Number 8, My Singing Monsters Unboxing Video. This is another one of those validating things for me as a creator, sure, but it was finally a chance to deliver a really heartfelt message while unboxing a really kind and amazing gift sent to me by Big Blue Bubble and Play Monster LLC with the help of Chizcom, of course. Obviously, added bonus when baby Kendo gets to react to something and be on the channel. <laughs> Number 7! Meme Review! Kendo! This was probably the video that I felt closest to all of you with. You being the most elite members of Kendopolis. Because again, this video wasn't very far reaching, kinda like the Pass Part 2 one. But it reiterated to me that we all stand as one, like the channel motto says. Because you're all so creative and hilarious, I mean what better way to discover that than using memes. But yes, this is amazing, you should have gone for the head. <laughs> Number 6, Undertale Sans Super Smash Bros. Boss Fight. The Smash Brothers stage builder videos were a new thing for us in 2019, and by and large, they actually performed okay for the channel sometimes, with this one being in the top three. But on a feeling level, I loved it, and that's what's more important going forward. I loved it because it brought me back to maybe some of those earlier days of the channel when we were making Undertale creations and Scribblenauts, but like a Pokemon evolution, we evolved to Super Smash Brothers with this Sans boss fight stage. And you guys, I have some Super Smash Brothers Ultimate stuff in the works, comedy musical skit stuff, I really hope that you guys are gonna like it. Coming soon. Number 5, Godzilla in Scribblenauts. One of my favorite Scribblenauts creations of all time, to use in any random situations, might be Godzilla from 2019. The episode kicked off our four episode series on Godzilla and that franchise, and I often wonder if that's a good way to run the channel's creation videos as a whole, maybe just perhaps by franchise rather than week to week voting or whatever. I don't know, we'll see. 
Number 4. The Galler Starters in Scribblenauts. These were also some of my favorite creations, even of all time, really, specifically with the Pokemon that might have possibly overtaken Charmander for the number one spot in my heart and favorites list, Score Bunny. That's huge, by the way. If that's my new favorite Pokemon, I think it is. The episode had some funny moments, cool creations, and back then I kind of wished it performed better because I put so much thought into it, but that's how YouTube goes, as y'all know. Number 3. Super Smash Kendo Ultimate. I actually I actually really love the Kendo crossovers like anytime, and I'm contemplating doing like a whole month of them one day, you know, just the entire month is those. But this one was extra fresh because of the skit at the beginning, bringing back that Scribble Ventures feel, but with an upgrade, I guess. Well, good thing I'm here! Kendo the Hedgehog- No! Don't you understand? Forget Avengers! This... This is the actual end game here. Number 2, Craft Warriors Team Sonic Army. I am forever grateful to a viewer named Elijah, whom I have no idea if he's still viewing these days or not, but he showed me the game Craft Warriors and I instantly appreciated that game on many levels. But being that our channel largely retains the whole creativity and creating characters aspect, the Team Sonic Army was my first foray into this game, and that episode brought me so much joy and so much fun, and I hope it did the same for you. And the number one video, as told by Dr. Kendo himself, is the Ode to Galler music video. Okay, if it wasn't obvious that this would be number one, let me just say I felt really good being able to flex my musical muscles again on this channel, but also to be playing Pokemon Sword and Shield. These were games I looked forward to as soon as they were announced, and this project really put all of the creative bones into action. You know what I mean? It's like, I got to get back to the rap stuff, I got to write music, I got to compose music, do it all about video games, and have my wife sing on the track. It was just like, I don't know, it's like, if you can't see how beautiful the games are, you just like listen to that song, put that video on and I feel like I really highlighted some of the like physically like aesthetically beautiful areas but also just the sentiment of it all. Statistically it performed horrible on YouTube but that's beside the point. What it did for my heart was absolutely tremendous. Curious to know how everybody out there felt about it but anyway now a word from our Dr. Kendo. So what did you think? Do you agree with any of those? Please put in the comments what your top 10 or top anything could just be top one moments or videos or whatever were on this channel. And now let's quickly switch gears. What a terrible transition. So this is just a time to sort of talk candidly about YouTube. You know, last year I was saying like, we're in big trouble, the system is changing and whatnot. Boy, did I not know what was gonna happen in 2019. YouTube changed even more. So I used to get 75% of my traffic through suggested videos. Uh, you probably know what that is, but on mobile, you just scroll down and it's video suggested to you on a desktop or whatever you just go to the right of the screen and they put a whole bunch of videos now it's like let's say you watch late night talk show hosts or whatever you could be watching dr. Kendo and then be suggested videos from late night talk show hosts how are those two things related they're not it's supposed to be, I thought that's how it used to work basically, was it was like related content. So I used to get in there, you know, with FNAF, Bendy, Baldi, Steven Universe, Gravity Falls, any of my videos that you guys saw like hit big Undertale throughout the years. I was getting in on like Lauren's side videos, even PewDiePie at one point, Jacksepticeye. I was in there, man, but it proved that the audience actually wanted to see my videos because they were being clicked on. I was getting success, I was getting subscribers, I was getting views like crazy. So that shows you it wasn't like I didn't deserve to be in those top spots, you know what I mean? Like, that's how I made it. I did it. Nobody, like, came and shouted me out. I didn't do, like, uh, I didn't try to do clickbaity type things. And what's funny is I, I kind of always said, you can look back on the career, and especially when uh, FNAF, like, blew up for me, that was the only month that I made, like, $6,000 approximately. The only month? But it was, like, uh, millions of views in that one month. Almost 40,000 subscribers that one month. We're talking December 2014. If I would have just, like, kept doing five nights Nights at Freddy's videos over and over and over and over and over and over again. I probably would be where some of these other people are because I started out at the same, I guess, area as like Smike, Super Horror Bro, Daco, Fusion Z Gamer, all those guys. You know, they're in like the 900,000 million range, you know, all that stuff. I'm not necessarily saying that I made a bad move because I loved it so much. You know, I really did like FNAF, but I liked everything else that we did. I liked being exposed to the other series and the other franchises. But the point is, I didn't try to like do that just because it would make money or because it would give views. I would like listen to the comments, but some people were really extreme, you know, like I would do just two videos or three videos in a row that were Five Nights at Freddy's and they're like, God, Dr. Kid, don't do something else. You're trying to sell out and stuff like that. I never sold out, okay? 
I constantly thought about, you know, how can I do this while staying myself? It wasn't in my nature to just do something because, oh, it'd be easy. Oh, it would sell out or whatever like that. You know, I there are people that I know in this space in content creation that try to do like a minimum amount of work possible. When did I ever do that on a long term basis? The only time if I ever had to do that was like, oh, I had to do a speed create because I'm going out of town on me and my wife's anniversary. You know what I mean? It's like for a damn good reason. I would do it. So what is the point here? In 2019, very recently, so at the end of November, going into this month as well, I actually was able to revitalize my little channel, youtube.com slash D-R-K-E-N-D-O. That's just Dr. Kendo. Uh, something I'm really passionate about, some of you guys know, some of you don't, was uh, Pokemon Go. I love that game, have loved it every single day since 2016, since I started. Absolutely amazing. So I've been putting Pokemon Go content on there this year. And so mid-November into now, that channel actually got my monetization like I did some videos that were just really dope and hit it big quote unquote we're not talking huge we're just talking big enough to get the monetization standards and so now I'm trying to put content over there and this channel can now sort of be like what I'm saying is that allows me to then make this channel be whatever I want for the projects you know because we've been doing scribble knots for seven years some people are tired of it uh, clearly just by the analytical numbers but then some of you still like it so I was like I want to keep doing it if we're having fun. That is the goal. Before I get to the goal, actually, I just want to say it's like what I was going back to before is people doing minimal work or, you know, doing like low effort, minimal editing kind of videos, you know, all that stuff. Like they either make it huge or they like still do better than like some of my videos did by the numbers on Dr. Kindle commentaries in 2019. I'm mostly just talking to 2019, you know, like I'm trying lots of stuff that I felt was creative, hard work. I put in the time, put in the effort. And so then on this smaller Dr. Kendo channel, I did a Pokemon Go raid. I just had two screens raiding. No commentary, no music, just literally the game's sounds of a new legendary raid boss in Pokemon Go. And that video like did better than half of the videos that I've uploaded recently. And that one video with basically no effort, like it took me like an hour maybe of my life, did better than Ode to Galar, my Pokemon sword and shield rap musical, like full of talent. You know, I flexed every creative muscle. I did all the, the, the rap. I did all the music. I wrote the song. I composed the melody. Like this took, you know, weeks and weeks and weeks and it was spanned months. I'm not going to say it like took literal months. It just spanned months because the games weren't out yet. But like those were new games. So that's one thing. That should help me, right? Like Pokemon Sword and Shield was a new game. It should have helped me. Pokemon Go comes from 2016. It was also music. Like no one else had made Pokemon Sword and Shield music that was original at that time. And on the day that I uploaded, actually somebody else did do a Pokemon Sword and Shield song. But I actually, we should have um, gotten suggested traffic from each other under an old YouTube. We would have worked off of each other. But I'm saying that it was original. Mine was actually a rap too. No one else did a rap. And I sat there, I captured all that footage in the game. It was like so beautiful. Like, tell me that that song sucked and that music video sucked. Like, people loved it. People on Twitter loved it. Wherever I put that video, people love it. They look at it, they're like, damn, this is good. Or they can at least tell that I put a lot of effort into it. Just real creativity, I guess. So what I'm saying is that, like, you know, you could upload on YouTube a video of just a raid boss battle and it does better than a rap, like, beautiful song that you composed and worked on for months on end, I guess. Did you get the point? That's how screwed up YouTube is. And that's why I'm going to move forward in 2020. I'm finally getting to the goal here. We are rebranding me. I'm gonna be the don't give a F guy, you guys. That's how I'm rebranding it. I guess if we need to be family friendly, we'll say uh, Dr. Fun or something. All I'm focused on is what can we do that's fun for the community, you guys specifically. That was always something I tried to do. I said, I want to connect with you guys more. We made the Discord. I think we did it, but when I was focused on like, oh, okay, that's not really gonna get views, focusing on that kind of stuff, views and subscribers and all this, it doesn't make me happy. It doesn't make you guys happy like the, the, the thing is we need to do what makes us happy right and uh, sometimes that means that we're not gonna do scribble knots videos but you've already had that kind of experience the last few months I've been loving these live streams we're gonna do more of those Pokemon Sword and Shield live streams maybe other games I don't know do you guys want live streams I'm always asking for y'all's opinion and I always need it so it's always welcome somebody in the discord was like hey you should like do movie reviews so I'm just gonna review a movie it's just gonna be random we're just gonna have fun with it all right we're just gonna have fun with it. Have fun!
done with it? So one last thing, if I make a video like this and I say you guys like are doing something bad, I actually don't really mean the people in the Discord and the people who are like the most loyal. There's like 300 to 500 of you I think that are like super down with whatever we're gonna do. We, we are going to band together. And then there's like 80 of you on the Discord or 100 that are like the super, super tight. And then there's even people down there if you drill it down further that are like the most elite. Loyal to Kendopolis, we all stand as one type. You guys are the ones. Y'all determine where this goes. Because just like those Five Nights at Freddy's days, I listened to the comments. If anybody was to say that I don't, like, pay attention to my fans, that would be the farthest criticism away from anything that I could ever do. I have answered every single comment that was not a request on this channel that I got. Sometimes YouTube put them in spam or didn't notify me that I got a comment. Sure, one could slip. But I bet I have, like, a world record of how many comments I've answered. I, somebody look into that. YouTube, I know you're watching this. Somebody out there in front YouTube, Susan. And so because we don't know what's gonna happen with Kappa as well coming up in 2020, my channel's probably extremely, like, vulnerable to that if it's gonna hurt us. I don't know. We're gonna let loose. I'm the don't give a F guy. I'm just gonna be all aloof. Oh, I lost a thousand subscribers this day, which I did, by the way. YouTube purged them. I was at 199k and then it went down to 198k. Who cares? Who cares? The don't give a F guy. I hope that you guys like him. At the core, always gonna be Dr. Kendo. Not gonna change who I am. I love you. If you are like a super Utapam, son of a grand ninja, elite member of Kendopolis, thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. We've done a lot of things. I think even if my time is up of like quote unquote fame, look at all the things that I've accomplished. We did hit 200,000 subscribers at one point. I have my own Dr. Kendo controller. I'm a character or gear objects in three different video games. Like that's amazing. Over the years, I got to like exclusively announce news about indie games. I've been to a ton of events and whatnot as like a special media guest or whatever, content creator guest. We got the silver play button, 60 million or more overall video views overall on the channel like this is amazing you know what I mean that's really cool and so because I run this channel that's one thing but I said it at the start of this we run this channel together we all stand as one so that was your accomplishment too but I mean it from the bottom of my heart and so thank you so much for viewing <laughs>